welcome back. Now, Mark, before the break, we talked about um, the myth. Yes. Or we started to get into it with mm -hmm. people thinking that only gay men molest children. Yes. What do you say to that? And that myth is, uh, you know, I find, at one time I was looking at it in a derogatory way, but I just find that basically now, as I'm getting younger, that most people are not educated in mm -hmm. that area. And, and, and the problem is, is that, you know, I don't want to be too discriminatory when it comes to this issue for what I'm about to say. But what I'm saying is I want people to understand what I, where I'm going with this. You know, most of society looks at the average openly gay man as, as being a pedophile. But when you look at the openly gay man that's known out here, you don't see us going before the courts or, or being accused uh, of molesting some young boy. Mm -hmm. In many cases, in many cases, that young boy is more protected by the openly gay man from the father, from, from many of these kids. Because when you look at some of these fathers, honey, they're the ones that's out there molesting their own children. Mm -hmm. Now, in my experience, when it comes to the children, I think that a lot of times the, uh, the mothers don't play, play a, clean, a keen role in that area. And what I mean by that is I remember growing up, I remember my mother, um, you know, had a friend. We never saw him as children. Mm -hmm. We never saw him. It wasn't until late in years that we found out that my mother had another boyfriend. The women today have a guy today, introduce that guy to these children. When you look, they broke up. When you look, it's another man in the household. And these guys are in the house. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is, is that women have to take a more responsive role when it comes to their children. They need to separate the children from the, from the, from the male figure mm -hmm. that's now coming into the household that is not their father. The other thing is, is that, um, a lot of times in my experience recently, you find a lot of children have a lot of idle time, a mm -hmm. lot of idle time, you know, where the mother is constantly working, the child may go to school, uh, the child comes home from school, the child's doing this, doing this, doing that, but you have no idea who that child is interacting right. with, especially when they're catching the bus on a daily basis, especially spending when they're that spending home that then. time home, you don't, and everything on Facebook and Twitter and all of this, you don't see what's really going on with that child. You don't know who that child's coming in contact with. What I mean is, parents need to take a more active role in the whereabouts of their children from a minute to minute by second basis. Meaning, if the child's going to school, he gets out 3.30, he goes to uh, what the after school program or the soccer team or whatever, and if the soccer games finish at six o'clock, parents need to be there five minutes to six. Mm -hmm. Not 10 minutes after six, not 6.30. Parents are now taking a, a, a more comfortable role. Oh, well, my child is with this group. As long as it's there, they're looking at it as a babysitter. But you're not there to really see what's going on, mm -hmm. and you are now opening up the door for other people to come into contact with your child, and that's where the molestation, and that's one of the high prevalence of what's happening today. Mm -hmm. You have these, these young girls now, mom and dad can't afford to pay for the cell phone and keep the internet on, so now you get these young girls that are propositioning these older men. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see all these older men going before the courts. Now let's discuss youth. You had talked about in the beginning, uh -huh. um, you're comfortable with who you are yes. and whoever has an issue with that, that's on them. Yes. Who doesn't know Mark Anderson? Who doesn't know Sybil Barrington? But do you still get abuse oh, um, yes. and disrespect? Oh, yes. Most people would never believe this, but I'm discriminated against every day. Can you? Every day I'm discriminated against verbally. You know, in some form of way, I'm discriminated against. Um, and I who, still who's get usually the perpetrator? Man, other, you know, heterosexual guys, you know. And now it just brushes off me. You know, I'm, I'm that strong where I just turn around and tell them, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You know, sometimes it's a little uh, bothersome. And what I mean by that, because sometimes they would do it in a way where it's, you know, if I'm wrong, like, upstanding people in the community, you know, and then somebody may say something. I'm like, my, you know. What would they say? Uh, I can't believe it. I'm a Vabatiman or something like that. Um, they still throw the word faggot at me, you know. And, um, but 
what I mean by that is, even though I may be offended by it, I'm only offended. I'm really not even offended, to be honest with you. I'm just a little uncomfortable about, uncomfortable about it because it's happened. Does it get tiresome? It does because I'm growing old. You know, I've heard that word ever since I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I've learned to just deal with it and just say whatever, you know, work it out, you know. And I find that it ignores them. I find that it hurts them even more than I ignore them. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been physically assaulted or attacked? No, they don't want to go down that road with me, and they know that. I think deep down in their psyche, <laughs> they know not to mess with me in that area because um, I'm still a man. <laughs> I'm still a man. And I tell guys all the time, don't let the dress fool you, sweetie. What a perfect way <laughs> to end this show. This has been another edition of Straight Talk here with the fabulous Mark Anderson here at the Paradise Lounge. Yes. And we'll be back next week. Thanks for tuning in.